good morning. So what's happening today is we are going to be taking Lucy here to the vet. Um, so what I did was last night I got her into her carrier last thing at night because what I didn't want to do today was have a situation where I had parrots flying everywhere and me trying to shove Lucy into the carrier. Well, actually, that's a little bit exaggerated because Lucy um, is quite happy to go into her carrier. She likes going in there. But um, I had uh, visions of Susie, who she shares a cage with, um, flying out and getting loose. And I don't like to leave the parrots loose when I'm out of the house just because they might get into some mischief um, and it might not be safe for them. Um, I mean, we do obviously parrot proof the house but you obviously try and make sure things are as safe as they can be but um you know we are humans and so we might accidentally leave something that might not be safe for them to chew and play with while and um, we are out of the house so it's it's better that um, they stay in for the wee bit of time that we do that for so um Susie has been not Susie, sorry, I'm getting my names mixed up. Lucy has been having some problems with her feathers. It started with a really bad molt. It was just a super terrible molt, and I'm sure that is all it was. Um, and then as the new feathers were coming in, they must have been really itchy, and she was picking them and things like that as they were coming in. Um, and now her body is basically all downy feathers, and... Um, the new feathers are having a problem to come in. Um, she's got no history of this sort of behaviour. She eats a good diet. So you have some bits of pepper here for her just now that I will give her. I'll actually give her a piece while we're chatting here. Let's see if I can manage this. Um, the zip might be a bit tricky. Let's see. Hmm. Let's see, can I manage this? Yes. There we go, I'll just uh, push the paper through here. Oh, you're making kiss noises. Yeah, you're making kiss kiss noises. Here, do you want the bit of paper? Would you like the bit of paper in there? Let me put my hand in it, have you got it? I think you just want to play with my hand. Instead of eating the paper, there's little food bowls in here, so I will just tuck that into the food bowl and let her have it. I'll maybe see if I can put that. No, I won't put the other bit in just now. There we are. Um, so we've got that. Um, yeah. So, oh, I can hear her now chewing it. There we go. Um, so, so yeah, she's having some problems. Um, I want to get her to the to the vet because um, it could be. That um, it it could be something like a skin infection or something like that, where um, where she needs some antibiotics or something like that, um, or it could be, I mean, I suppose it could be behavioural. She doesn't have a history of that, but it could be behavioural. I know certainly with the recent situation that um, I have been feeling very stressed, as I'm sure you can understand. I'm sure you'd be feeling very stressed too if suddenly um, your mobility was extremely limited to pretty non-existent. Um, yeah, you would you would be a bit excited about that, not in a good way. Um, so, you know, while I obviously try to control my emotions around all of my parrots and provide a safe, happy, lovely environment for them. You know, they're not daft, so they can sense things. Um, and this is not like, you know, I'm not meaning anything other than, you know, they have very good senses. They are highly attuned to pick up on different, um, different like body languages and different like, Someone once said they can actually see the heat of your skin and it's why it's very difficult to lie to a parrot because say you said, oh, I'm going to put them back in their cage and they didn't want to do that. And so you knew they didn't want to do it. So you sort of sneaked up and you're going, oh, I'll just get them and look, I'll pretend something nice is happening. 
and then I put them back in and they somehow sense. Well, apparently that's why, because they sense like that your temperature has gone up a bit because you're obviously a little bit stressed about it. I am like, like minorly stressed about it type of thing, you know? Um, um, or maybe majorly, depending what sort of parrot you've got. I don't know. Um, so they they do that, and that's what I'm meaning when I say they sense things. So obviously I've been very majorly stressed recently. Um, there is a little bit of an update about that. Um, so I will put that into this video um, somewhere. I will I will put that in. Um, so if you, you keep watching, you will get the update. It's not much of an update. It does not substantively change my situation. Um, so it's not a big update, but it is an update, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, poor Lucy is going to the vet. I have put a plastic collar on her. I know that um, some people say you should do that. Some people say you should not do that. Um, this is not about if I should or shouldn't do that. Um, you know, if you don't agree with that, that's absolutely, totally fine. We can all um, disagree quite happily. I don't like agree to disagree because that's sort of saying that you're agreeing when you're not, you know, and we can all just happily disagree and still be friends, you know. Um, I'm not overly happy about the collar, but I cannot have her biting her body or destroying her feathers. And there we go. I'm going to have to stop this little section of the video because my mum is shouting me. She must be shouting and I've not heard her because now she's done a little announcement on the A lady. Did you know you could do that? If you say A lady, do you know who the A-Lady is? I think we all know who the A-Lady is at this point. But you know, the, the um, certain speakers from a certain Amazon company. Well, if you say to that, if you say whatever word it is you use to, to trigger it, and you say announce, and then you say what you want to announce, it'll do a little ding-dong noise, and all the speakers in the house will all do the same announcement. So, yeah. I will um, be back with you very soon. See you soon. Hello, I'm back with you now. So, yeah, um, it wasn't anything too serious. It was a conversation about flutes, of all things. Um, so we were talking about flutes. Um, I play the desk camp recorder. Um, so I think this is how we got onto flutes. But anyway, it was it was a good conversation. Um, I don't know if there's a market for a video for me playing the recorder, but you know, let me know if there is and I'll maybe put it somewhere. Um, but, but yeah, um, we will be heading off to the vet quite soon. I'm a bit nervous because we're seeing a vet that I've not seen before and in the past I've had experiences with vets claiming to know about parrots and then I find out the very hard, difficult way that they that they maybe don't specialise in them. That is not the vet I'm going to today, not at all. Um, I'm just saying that that is an experience I've had with different vets in the past. So now um, when I see someone that I don't know, I'm like, oh dear, what's going to happen? It's a bit silly because this vet has always been very good. Um, and, you know, um, so it's a bit, it's, it's a little bit silly, but it is what it is, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, sorry, the washing machine's making quite a loud noise there, isn't it? I will be working on the gingerbread men as of tomorrow, like from when this is recorded. So um, I'm not quite sure when this is going to be posted. It might even be that it gets posted on the same day that I'm working on the gingerbread men, if that makes sense. But as of recording this, this is Tuesday morning. I am, I'm hoping to put this video up later today like this evening um but if not it'll be wednesday and you'll be able to think about me working on gingerbread men yeah um miss miss is there saying oh oh so yeah oh and the other random beeping noise is um some porridge cooking in the one pot we have a one pot i could do a whole video about that as well i don't know that's particularly anything related but 
you know, why not? Um, but yeah, it's first thing in the morning here, so I will go and finish getting ready for the day and I will be seeing you soon when we're taking Lucy to the vet. Hello, I don't know why, but my phone was randomly not recording videos there, but I've got it recording now, so that's good. And I thought, why don't we do a bit of blind cooking together? Um, I do have an update about Lucy and everything, and I will share that in a wee minute. Um, I'm still, I think, sort of processing things myself, and I'm sort of, um, I don't know, feeling a bit bit stressed shall we say everything's okay but i will share everything in a minute and i just thought that while we're here we'll cook some potatoes so this is a this is a one pot i think it's called i've not um been sponsored or anything like that um this is one that we have in the house like already and you can actually see where one of the parrots has got really needed it was susie and she's poked at this sort of plastic like screen protector on the front here. You can actually pull it up and she's not got through to the buttons, but you know, it's good to um, parrot proof your house. So let me know if you want to see some of the nifty things that I've done to parrot proof things um, so that so that um, your stuff doesn't get broken. Because believe me, if you've not got a parrot yet and you're just getting one, your stuff can get broken. Um, mines aren't too bad for it. You know, we're normally quite on top of things. Um, as I was saying earlier, um, you know, when we go out and things, I make sure that they're in their cages just for safety. We're normally not out for very long. We're out for a little bit longer today, but generally we're not out for too long. We go out, we do our things, we come back in and then that's it. You know, um, normally I'm in here working on um, orders like vegetables or packing things or whatever. Um, and, um, you know, or if I'm not here, someone's here. Um, although at the minute I'm basically here all of the time um, um but that's a whole other update that we'll be doing in another minute as well so yeah let's get on with the potatoes so i think it should come on at about four minutes it's like a pressure cooker type of situation let's see if i can get this i can never quite feel the wee buttons with my fingers there we go and then um i'm putting my hand over the screen that's not helpful five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty there we go if it's not bang on twenty i'm sure someone will point out to me but it will be close enough and let's wait for it to beep yay beep 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 and um I'll just make sure that that's on there. This is not my office. This is my personal like kitchen. Um, so yeah, this is not this is not my workspace. Um, not at all. I think I've showed the line note on the floor here before, but basically one of my parrots has done a pretty good job of lifting some of the line note. Um, we should be going to Aberdeen um very soon. Um, for a couple of days and I will be organising someone to help take care of the parrots so while they're out of the house and while we're out of the house I'm going to see if it will be possible to get the kitchen lino replaced because it's quite a small piece of lino you know um, so hopefully that will be possible to get that done at the same time and then nobody's getting affected by any weird like fumes or glue or whatever it is that they use to do that but yeah I'll be back with you in two seconds I'm just going to grab myself a cup of tea and then I will be right back to update you with all the updatey things face centered two seconds oh there we are it's back on recording I'll just try and mute the speech if that's okay face center near bottom edge speech off oh there we are so I don't know if I'm centered now or near the bottom edge, but I think I'm probably centered. So yeah, um, um, I have some updates to share now. Um, so we'll start with um, we'll actually start with the guide doggy update. Um, and like I say, I don't think it's a whole lot of an update. Um, about um just about sort of 
It will be now about three and a half weeks ago, I spoke to a manager of Inguide Dogs, who I haven't spoken to before, who um, is, I think, relatively high up within the sort of structure of Guide Dogs, within Scotland anyway. And we had a great conversation. She did not discuss the video in the conversation. Um, it was because what had happened was I have a cousin in America. I've actually mentioned this cousin before on my website. So sometimes I float some nutritional things past her because she's actually a qualified nutritionist. Um, so I have a lot of like knowledge of nutrition, but I obviously um, double check it with someone who is actually um, qualified to say, yes, um, you're thinking on this vegetable or this fruit or grain or whatever it happens to be is correct it contains such and such or or maybe it doesn't and so I need to find something else or whatever but no normally I'm pretty good at knowing what contains what but you know what I mean we we consult with each other um in the future I'm hoping to offer her a more um paid position because you know um I I really value that um and I think that would be good to do, but I obviously need to um, figure out how to do that. And we obviously need to have enough um, funds coming in to um, to give someone that security, as it were. Um, I would also like to employ other people in the future, you know, um, definitely not just family members, um, you know. Uh, but anyway, that's a long way off and not really quite relevant to all this. So um, um, what it is, is um, this cousin of mine made a complaint round about when I actually posted the original video, but it had nothing to do with the video. I know my cousin has not seen the video because I tried to show her the video and she found it too upsetting to watch. I know she's definitely not seen it and the complaint went in, in before then. Now, it was not my complaint as such, if you see what I mean. Um, so I don't know exactly what she said. I mean, we've talked about it since then, because obviously it came to my attention that that had happened, because someone from Guide Dogs asked if they could talk to her, because she was obviously saying that she was my cousin. Um, which does make me wonder if by that point um, they were getting some complaints from the video, as it were. Um... Um, because, you know, it's a funny thing to do. In fact, no, I remember actually now it was just before the video went live um, that it came to my attention that she'd done that. But like I say, I didn't know at that point exactly all what she'd said, but we've since talked. And yeah, basically, um, she more or less said the same things that I said in the original video. Um, you know. So this is what I was speaking to this manager about, ostensibly. I do think by the time I spoke to the manager, there must have been other complaints coming in from the video. So that is great, guys. If you want to call them complaints or whatever, or um, if you want to say I want to get in touch and leave feedback or whatever it is that you're saying to them, whatever you're doing, it's great because um, in this conversation, I am... Um, this lady claimed that there might be two potential dogs. Now, on the surface, this sounds like a brilliant update, doesn't it? There was no promises made or anything like that. And, um, you know, the stuff that I brought up in the video is stuff that I can discuss anyway. But like I say, she never once mentioned the video in that conversation. Um, and so we sort of covered a lot of the same ground that I also covered in the original video um and you know at the time it seemed like oh we're making some progress here we're having a dialogue this is a good thing so by the time I came off the phone I was jumping up and down fit to run on YouTube and go woo guys look what's happened and it was actually um someone else that said to me pause a second and think about what's happened here unpack what's happened here and really think about if you've actually made progress or if they've just talked nice. Um, 
And I'm so glad that that person, um, who will remain nameless, but they know who they are, um, I'm so glad that they took the time to say that to me. Because by the next day, I had thought about it and gone, hang on a minute, that person, they were right. Um, you know, no promises were made. They dangled two dogs at me. Um, when I pointed out, well, I don't really feel that guide dogs fully comprehend the gravity of my situation because it is not possible for me to use a cane. Um, they were saying, oh, yeah, we, we know that. We've got other people um, that are not able to use a cane or they don't want to use one. And I said, well, no, it's not that I don't want to use one. I cannot use one. This is medically not allowed. Um, for a good reason, because if I used one, my hands would basically become, I suppose you would say, like, paralysed, and then I wouldn't be able to regain the function of them. Um, that is certainly what various neurologists have told me. It's what various occupational therapists, or what people sometimes call an OT, have told me. I think physiotherapists have said it as well. Um, and there was another person, but I can't remember what their title was. But basically, various people from various... Um, disciplines and things have said to me over the years don't do that it's like the equivalent of me doing hard manual labor I'm also not allowed to use what they call a Perkins brailer for the same reason um it would have the same effect um so when I was in school they had to get like a different kind of brailer for me to use and then what happened was eventually I actually couldn't feel the braille to read the braille and there were quite a lot of people around me when I was small saying this is what will happen eventually. Kathleen will not be able to read the braille so you should actually be teaching Kathleen to use a computer instead of using braille um, because this is what will happen in the long term but you know sometimes people do what they think is best at the time not necessarily what is best um, and I think we can all do that can't we because you know we're not omnipotent um, much as sometimes we'd like to think we are, we're not. So anyway, moving moving past that is just a little explanation there of, of things. But guide dogs, um, like I say, they sort of said, oh yeah, we are aware of that. And I said, I don't think you can be because, um, you know, this is the effect that this is having on me. You're respecting, you're respecting me? No, they're definitely not respecting me. They're expecting me. <laughs> They're expecting me, that's called inappropriate laughter. Um, they're expecting me to rely upon my mum, who has her own disabilities to be dealing with, which is clearly not a tenable long-term situation. Oh, there we go, a parrot agreed with me. Did you hear Susie going, mm-hmm? Um, and anyway, though, she was very convincing that, oh, they're all very keen to build a bridge. She didn't use those exact words, but you know, um, she kept talking and I came away thinking, oh wow, they really want to build a bridge. And I did say to her at one point, I thought guide dogs as in the association were great. And I really don't know, like, um, at what point that started to change. But I've certainly definitely got into a pattern in the last while, um, if I said how long that last while was, you'd be shocked. Um, where something positive seems to be happening and then it turns out not to be so positive. So we had a good talk. Um, I also explained to her about the messages that the team manager had sent to me. And then she was basically making out to me, this lady that I talked to, that somehow I'm the one with the problem. But at the time she was so convincing that I was like, oh, you're just fantastic but the next day like I said I woke up thought about it and went hang on a wee minute I'm not the one with the problem here and this is actually what she was trying to convince me of and even if she had been wonderfulness itself I have still not met either of these dogs I have now had some more information about them and it doesn't sound overly promising to me it sounds like they've sort of found these dogs somewhere. I've had varying stories on where and how, by the way. Um, I've not met either of them. And um, 
somebody at the time of recording this video is meant to be going and checking them again today and one of them it sounds like they are sort of going we're not sure about this dog so if i meet the dog they're going to already have that attitude programmed in that they're not sure about the dog so it doesn't matter what i do at that point if they're not sure i'm just probably not going to get that dog and the other one is quite a bit older than what a guide dog would normally be they're saying it's because of the covid situation but the covid situation would have happened now like the the the, the really big bit of it but we were all in lockdowns and things would have happened now sort of um when that dog was in their sort of like puppyhood situation and i just I just don't know. Um, I'm not saying that the person who told me about the older dog deliberately lied or anything. Now, unfortunately, I have had situations where I've wondered if someone has done that. That was not one of these situations. I'm not saying that they lied. Not at all. Um, I think that was their understanding of the information they had at the time. Um, by this point, by the way, I'm back dealing with the team manager that sent me like this really nasty message that basically accused me of wanting to run Barney into the ground. Um, I don't know who convinced me to deal with this person or whatever. Now I can be professional. Um, I can absolutely be professional. So like I said, I started off about three and a half weeks ago talking to another manager who is much, much higher up in the scheme of things who talked to me really lovely and then like I say the next day I was like mm, I don't know then um sort of think it was last week uh, the original team manager got in touch with me and told me a bit more about these dogs well she told me all sorts of things about um like dogs as a like a sort of like the dogs in a sort of vague way but then I sort of went mm, I said um so oh and we have the potatoes beeping that we put on a while ago um so she told me about the the dogs in a sort of vague way and I sort of said so I said I know you're not promising that they are matched with me or anything like that but can you give me any information at all about them and you know well what I actually wanted to do at that point was have proof of what they call proof of life I wanted to know these dogs existed if she'd sort of gone um eh, well eh, we'll get back to you on that it would have been very suspicious but no she actually gave me names and ages and things which is how I found out one of them was quite a bit older um quite a bit older than what would be normal um so yeah there's the update I don't know that it's much of an update if you're confused so am I um, I received a message last week after I spoke to that team manager from the other higher up lady who um, I didn't like fully hear what it said. It just said something about talking to such and such person and we've now discussed these dogs and blah, blah, blah. You know, and so I thought, well, no, again, I want to just wait and think about what we actually discussed before I get back to her. So this morning I opened up the message. And actually what she was saying is, well, you've discussed that, so your situation moved on, so can you take down that video, please? And I wrote back and I said, well, actually, no, my situation has not moved on. I am, I am, um, you know, I'm not promised either of these dogs. Neither of them has been, like, matched with me. Um, there's no, like, substantive difference to my situation. I am, um, and... I didn't um, add this next bit in the message, but personally, what I'm saying to you is I'm a bit suspicious um, because, um, or, or, or even cynical, because I find it a bit too, like, how did they get these dogs? Um, the way they told me they found these dogs, I then, when I spoke to the person that had actually supposedly found them, um was told a slightly different story. It was a, basically the same story, but it was different enough that I'm just a bit suspicious. And I suspect what's happened is that a lot of you have jumped on that video and complained. Because this is what had happened when she said, um, well, can you take the video down, please? Because she'd apparently received a complaint last Thursday. So, you know, when I posted a video last Friday, someone must have already have done that, which is like, to me, it's like brilliant. People are actually taking action on the video. I make no apology for that whatsoever. Um, 
again this is this is not about being nasty to guide dogs if someone's come here going oh yeah i just can't wait to welly into someone and be a nasty little keyboard warrior please don't this is not this is not what this is about this is about having a hopefully constructive conversation with an organization and this is about not only sorting my situation which is obviously immediately pressing to me but also you know there must be other people in similar situations where their voice has not been heard and they are being left without their mobility and independence as well. Um, but um, I did say in the in the message this morning um, that I sent saying, well, no, my situation hasn't changed. I did also um, um, say, you know, that that um, um, I'm still not entirely sure that my needs are being fully understood by guide dogs and I would be happy to have a conversation with this lady. So I've always said that I said it on the last video, like the big video, the big sort of 38 minute video, um, the original one. I did say, you know, if someone from guide dogs wants to reach out and build a bridge, I am more than happy to do that. So we'll see what happens with these dogs. Um, I feel that um you know we'll go through we'll go through the process and we'll see what happens i am not getting myself excited or hopeful or whatever else um because i just don't have the faith that they are going to come through with a dog um that's not a very nice place to be it's certainly not a nice thing to say um but that is where i'm at um I feel like I've had two dogs dangled at me and it's like, well, mm, so they've had four years to find a dog. You know, that that is more than long enough. Now, even if you allow them a year for the things that happened, unfortunately, with coronavirus, um, that's still three years. Yeah. And actually, I think we could argue that they've actually had even longer than that. But this is what I can proof do you see what i mean so when i come on here on videos and i say things i only say the stuff i can absolutely 110 percent prove i can say here's a piece of paper here's a text message here's um like a screenshot of whatever that i want to show you or here's um some other like piece of evidence um that that shows that what i'm saying is right enough um i certainly don't I certainly don't make a living from going on the internet and making negative videos. I used to actually do a lot of fundraising for guide dogs and a lot of public speaking. Um, when I was younger, it was life changing. Before I had a dog, I mean, literally, this was life changing. Before I had a dog, I was totally, totally dependent upon other people because it was not possible for me to use a cane. Um, and guide dogs even back then couldn't really understand like the full gravity of of that of me not being able to use a cane and why I couldn't use one so it wasn't so much that they couldn't understand that I couldn't but they couldn't understand why not um at that point now it's more they understand in a sort of way that I can't but they don't understand the gravity of how that affects my daily life it's like beyond their comprehension um but I will keep you posted on any developments. I will link the original video in the description. I am not going to take it down because I have not said anything untrue in the video. Everything I've said is true and my sub my situation has not substantively changed. Um, I do not have a promised dog at the minute. I am... Um, and that has not changed and it is quite entirely possible that one of these dogs fails in their training or um, that the dog does a little bit of extra training that it will need to do for me and decides it doesn't want to do that because they are living beings and sometimes dogs for no apparent reason will just decide no I, I don't fancy doing whatever it is that you want me to do that does happen um, and so you know what I hope one day that I bring home a dog um, and I can come on here and say 
wow, I have a dog. Now, how can we change this conversation so that we continue a conversation, but we're aware now that I have a dog, but, you know, we obviously need to, there's a continuing conversation here because something is obviously very broken when people are left without their mobility after having their mobility, you know, um, their independence. Um, so yeah, I will link to that um, original video as well, so that if you've not seen it, you can you can um, look at that and know exactly what I'm talking about. And hopefully we'll be back to some very positive content very soon. Now I'm going to just um, pause a little second here and have a sip of tea. And then I'm going to come back and update you about Lucy and her um, vet trip. Um, and what's going to be happening next and things like that. I have Lucy's carrier, well, I have a carrier that I use for um, carrying the parrots beside me. Um, I have different carriers for all of them, but this is the one that I prefer to use for, like, if we go out for, like, a, a day trip or something, because it has, um, like, backpack, like, straps on it and things. Um, and it's really easy to, like, carry, like, on my body, as it were. Um, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to come back and update you. But yeah, I just want to say that she's not in her carrier because I know that I was sitting here this morning when I did the first bit of the video and I had her in there. <laughs> so she's not still in there. It is open um, and she is not in there. She's on top of a tripod just now um, and we've screwed a little sort of perch on top of it. Um, but that's a whole other situation. So yeah, I'll be back in a minute with the Lu Lucy update properly. I'll speak to you in a wee second. Hello, I'm back now. I've had a nice cup of tea. Well, no, I've had a sip of tea. I've not had a cup of tea. I've had a sip of tea. Um, so this time before I muted the speech, it said near top. So who knows where my face is now? <laughs> um, so yeah, I thought I would update you now about Lucy and what's been happening with Lucy. So um, we took her to the vet this morning and what a lovely vet. Um, she was so nice and it turns out that she's done a lot of work with cockatoos in Australia. So she was um, very um, clued up on parrot things and it was just so impressive because um, like I say in the past I've had sort of mixed experiences with vets. Oh, um, I don't know if you've seen that or not, Lucy just flew over my head. Um, she does still have a collar on, but I'll talk about that in a wee second. So um, what happened was, I'm just going to make sure that she's not getting at my phone charger. No, she's um, she's not. I've, I've moved it now with my watch charger that she was after, but it's out of the way now. <laughs> and it's even away from the other parrot cage. It's just where things are plugged in there. But anyway, we've stopped her from um, from chewing that. <laughs> oh dear. Um what was I saying about parrot proofing houses? Anyway, um, I spoke to just a lovely, a lovely vet. And as I say, I've had some mixed experiences in the past, not with this vet practice, I have to say. Um, but just that, you know, I've sometimes taken my parrots to vets that maybe say that they know about parrots and then it turns out that they don't, or they've said, we will contact a specialised vet in case of an emergency and then that's maybe not happened. I'm not getting into that. That has been absolutely dealt with years ago, but we had a situation um, years ago, but it was dealt with at the time. So that's all good, isn't it? Um, I don't want to come on here and and bash someone who has maybe since learned, you know, and it was a long time ago. Um, but that was not this vet. This vet was fantastic. So if you are watching that was amazing um so um they obviously um knew that you know feather loss can be caused by all sorts of things it can be caused by something rather nasty and sinister called beacon feather disease what i would call beacon feather disease it has um other names as well 
um, but it's basically caused by a virus. I always deliberately keep my language here on Orkney parrots when it comes to the parrots quite simple because I don't know who's watching, what stage of your parrot keeping journey you're at. Maybe you inherited someone's parrot or anything like that. So I don't want to use complex language around the parrots um, too much. So let's just say it can be caused by a, a virus. And um, it's not actually, as far as I'm aware anyway, it's not a, a curable disease. So that would be very bad if she happened to have that. Now, I have my parrot regularly tested for all sorts of things. So we really don't think that it's that. Nobody else is sick. Nobody else has lost lots of feathers. We actually think what might have happened as well. I obviously said I have some stress going on in my personal life. I explained some of what that was. I was very polite. You know, I didn't like say anything like that was sounding really bad or anything. But I did say, you know, um, that my dog retired and... That I'm obviously stressed because uh, that's obviously had a massive impact on my ability to do things. And while obviously I'm not like um, necessarily openly displaying that around the parrots, maybe the parrot can sort of sense that off me. And she said it's entirely possible that this parrot is just more sensitive to my like emotions and has um, done that because of that um, because it started off with a really bad molt. Lucy's feather loss started off a really really bad molt. We don't think it's nutritional because you can understand my parrots have a really good diet though I say it myself I mean we can always learn and improve you know if I learn something new in four or five years time I will implement whatever new information I get then you know um, but as a general thing you know they eat a big variety of veg, um, fruit, a tiny little bit of seeds, a um, tiny little bit of nuts. Um, occasionally we give them pellets. I don't do that a lot, I have to say. Um, but, you know, different decisions suit different people and different birds. So, you know, if that means that your bird's getting their full nutrition, then you do what works for you and your bird and of course if you ever want to talk to me about your bird's nutrition I will be happy to um I will be happy to um help in any way that I can and if I don't know the answer to something I will be happy to um refer you to someone that that should know <laughs> um so so yeah um anyway um we don't think it's nutritional so it could just be that she's had this really horrendous molt and that she's then um, picked at her feathers and things and it's it got worse. But basically what she's done is she's sort of um, picked all the feathers on her body and she's down to like the little downy feathers underneath. And it didn't happen like really like fast or anything. Obviously it happened really, really fast when she was obviously sick or something. We would have been immediately going to the vet. It sort of happened slowly in amongst a molt and it took a little while to actually fully realise that a problem happened, if you see what I mean. Um, so what we're going to do is um, she's going to get some blood tests and things done. Now she was... Um, a little bit upset today in the vets and um, we tried not to roll her up in a towel and um, so I sort of held on to her and the vet tried to just examine her but she was like crying and things and um, getting like a bit distressed so eventually we had to wrap her up in something we really tried not to do that I don't like to do that and judging by how the vet was handling her the vet didn't want to do that unnecessarily either which was fantastic sometimes I think we're too quick to sort of um grab on parrots and restrain them and do all sorts of weird things to them. Um, now, there are situations where, yep, you have to sometimes be firm that, you know, this is what's happening and we need to have whatever it is happen. But we can do that in a kind, respectful way. Yeah. Um, where we're not, like, upsetting the parrot too much or anything. Um, again, if you think, oh, gosh, um. I handle my bird in this way or that way and I'm feeling a bit judged right now. This is not about you. Um, I am not judging anybody else. 
I do not know your situation, I do not know you, and I do not know your parrot. And that's not meant to sound unfriendly or anything. That's that's how it is. I don't know you, so um I'm not I'm not making any prejudgments about anybody else, not at all. It's not what I do. Um I wait till I have information before I make any conclusions about any situation. Um, I don't offer opinions or whatever else about things I do not understand or do not know about. Um, and so I'm certainly not going to say um, anything individual about people, if you see what I mean. I'm not, I'm not, that's not what that's about. It's just this is how I try to handle my parrots. Um, I try not to restrain them too much or anything like that. But poor Lucy today was not happy. So... What we're going to do is, um, the vet today is going to speak to a specialist avian vet um, and make sure that she gets a list of any other tests that they might want done. She took lots of photos and things of Lucy um, so that she can show the feather loss and everything. Um, and um, we are going to, we're going to um, make sure that we have a list of up-to-date tests to do. She already suggested a few tests as well, so we'll double check that with a, a specialist. Well, she'll double check it. I'm not double checking anything. Um, so anyway, you know, it's like the royal we. I don't know why. Why do people do that? They go, we this and we that, and actually it's somebody else. <laughs> or they're including someone else when actually it's them, or, you know, what's that? I don't know. But anyway, um, so, otherwise, other than the feather loss, Lucy is eating well, she's doing all her droppings and things and uh, everything like that. She seems, she seems to be happy in and of herself um, and everything like that. Um, so, so that's, that's good. So, what we're going to do is at the beginning of next week, she is going to go in and get like a tiny little bit of anaesthetic so that she's not um, freaking out and distressed like what happened today because the vet quickly realised she wouldn't be tolerant of getting like blood drawn and stuff. And Lucy is very friendly normally and very happy around people. So we don't want her to have like a really negative experience of having a blood test and things and getting scared. Um like even more scared um so she's going to get some blood tests and things done and any other sort of like samples and things taken then um so that'll be happening at the beginning of next week and i will obviously keep you posted um and we'll find out exactly what's what's happening um obviously if anything um shows up obviously all my other ladies will be tested as well um um if if anything really weird shows up for lucy but nobody else is sick so i think this is a lucy problem and not a generalized parrot problem um if you're concerned at all i mean and this sounds really odd like a very strange segue but i just want to put this out there if you're concerned at all about your orders or how things are prepared here or anything i um, follow really strict um, standards for preparing your parrot's food and everything so it never ever comes into contact with any of my parrots. Um, I don't allow my parrots into the room where it's made. Um, that's for just to you know keep up to date with all the hygiene and everything like legislation. I don't want like um, anything like weird getting into the food or anything like that. Um, so I obviously follow really strict like hand washing and um all sorts of other sort of sanitary uh procedures to make sure that that um nothing like that happens so this will not affect the parrot food that's going out it will not affect um the orders that are going out um in that way um i mean God forbid anything happens. I really hope not. I'm really hoping that this is something that we can get to grips with. 
Um, everything indicates that this is something that we can get to grips with and that it's not something more sinister, but we obviously have to go through procedures and rule things out um, and everything like that just to make sure. Um, but if it turns out that it's something really sinister and God forbid something happens to Lucy, um, I'm using euphemisms here uh, because this is this is the uh, internet um, and I just don't know what we can or can't say now but god forbid something happens um, then obviously I will um, probably take a little bit of time off of work to um, I don't know whatever it is you do with that situation um, yeah let's um, let's move on that was a bit morbid wasn't it um, so yeah, but there's no indication of that, so I shouldn't be worrying about that. So there is at this point there is no indication of that. It's just that we have to, and I'm very keen that we have to make sure that you know what's going on here, um, like you know, and make sure that that she's otherwise healthy and things and what's causing that. So we do need to solve what's causing that. One of the things I actually noticed today when we were in the vets um, and I was holding on to her is I felt her beak coming round and I didn't realise how much of her body she could still reach with the collar on. So if it's a behavioural thing that she's picking at them for, she can still pick a little bit. Um, um, but I think the collar is stopping her from actually like, really hurting herself, if that makes sense. So it's going to stay on for the time being, just until we have um, the the results and we know what we're dealing with. And then, obviously, um, once whatever we're dealing with has been treated, that will be coming off. Um, or we'll be making further decisions about that staying on or whatever will be happening, you know? Um, I appreciate that not everybody agrees with colours and things. Um, if you want to politely... Um, give me an alternative to the collar, um, you're more than welcome to do that. If you are rude or are in any way perceived to be rude, um, then obviously, you know, I'm, that's, that's, that's not, that's not great. <laughs> but um, if you want to politely give me an alternative, if you know of something better that's more effective, um, then please do reach out. You know, we're all, we're all learning here. Um, I'm certainly happy to have a dialogue with people. Um, like I say, if you want to just come along and like be nasty, then then that's obviously a different situation. Um, but yeah, if you want to have a discussion, that is a discussion, then by all means, please do. I'm always looking for improved ways of doing things. And then I share any knowledge that I have with you guys. Um, I enjoy doing that. That's obviously a big part of what I do. Um, so, so yeah, um, absolutely. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we've not covered. Oh, yes, here's a slightly more fun-ish thing to end with. I say fun-ish because um, um, I don't know how you will interpret this. <laughs> um, so one of the things that we are going to uh, do um, while she's having everything else done is we're going to get her microchipped. She does have a leg band at the minute and um, obviously she has her CITES um, certificate because she is an African Grey. So um, she needs to have one. Um, um, so she has all that. Um, but I'm going to get her microchipped too, because obviously she will live for a very, very long time. And what we want to do is make sure that she's always identifiable. Um, and we will also get a sample from her to check that she's definitely a girl. Now she came from a very good uh, breeder. She's my only parrot that came from a breeder. That's a whole other story for a different video. I am not getting into breeding versus rescuing. I'm just not going there because I don't want to get into that. There's lots of other people that get into that. I don't feel I can add anything to that. 
and I include everybody. You know, when I'm selling my parrot food, this is for everyone. Yeah, it's for everyone. So I don't want someone feeling judged or unwelcome or anything like that um, because they made a different decision um, or they made the same decision or they made whatever other decision or they live in this way or they live in that way or, you know, all the things that people can maybe feel sensitive about. I don't I don't want someone coming along and going, oh, Orkney parrots, oh no, I'll avoid them because I do this or that or hello, Lucy. Um, so that's not what I'm getting into when I say that she came from a breeder. Just it's a statement of fact that that's where she came from and she came from a good breeder who had her tested and um, she was tested as a female when she was a baby chick. Um, but, you know, um, I believe in second opinions, just to be on the absolute safe side. Um, normally she shares a cage with Susie, they get on, they're friendly, you know, um, Susie's been asking for her today when we came in, she was talking about Lucy and, um, she was saying, Lucy's a bird and she was, um, going Lucy, Lucy, like calling to her and things. So clearly she missed that her friend was not um with her um um so so yeah um lucy is you know i i need to have lucy tested because it turns out that lucy is a a boy and then she's sharing a cage with a girl i obviously need to know that now to my knowledge at the minute lucy is a girl but we're just going to take this opportunity to to double check that and i will do a little video about it which will be fun because I feel that some of the videos that I've made recently have been um have been heavy I think is the word I'm looking for um and that's not really the kind of thing I like to make um I have learned valuable lessons from those videos about sharing things and that where I actually went wrong is I should have shared things much sooner before it became a big heavy long video or before it became a really rambly video or you know um so I've learned I've learned a lesson here about you know it's sometimes okay to share some personal things as well which is good um you know everything's valuable um so so yeah but a minute ago when I said fun-ish, I don't know if people will find that fun or not, finding out if Lucy is actually a Lucy or a Lewis, <laughs> as it were. Um, but hopefully that will be fun to see um, what she is. I mean, obviously the ideal situation would be that my bird is absolutely healthy and doesn't need any other tests. And so then obviously we would never find out because I wouldn't have... Um, I wouldn't have the bird um, anaesthetised. I wouldn't have her anaesthetised and tested just for my own satisfaction unless I thought there was like some absolute reason to know something. But what we're doing is we're just taking the opportunity while she's having other things done to double check that. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I am not in any way trying to imply that my bird having any test done is at all fun. But what I'm trying to say might be fun is like the video seeing if she's a boy or a girl. I hope that all makes sense. Um, I certainly don't want people like coming and watching this and then thinking I'm saying something that I'm not or whatever, or being upset by something that I said. Um, I really wouldn't want that, not at all. And I also just want to quickly finish up by saying that if you've seen the guide dog segment earlier and you're now angry and want to go and cancel a sponsorship or a puppy um, sponsorship or anything like that, please do not do that. I don't feel that that solves this problem. Not at all. In fact, if anything, it actually might even add to the problem um, because um, um, guide dogs are not um like funded by the government in any way they are funded by voluntary donations and i don't think cutting off the funding is the answer to this problem not at all i 
I would encourage you if you are sponsoring a puppy or anything like that, I think that's fantastic. Remember at the end of the day, it's somebody like me that will be receiving that puppy and taking care of the puppy. Um, only by that point it will be obviously an adult dog or a young adult dog. Um, and a guide dog can be absolutely life-changing. So please do not think that that's what that's about. Absolutely not at all. It is about having a conversation. It is about, um, it's about, it's about, how can I, how can I phrase that? Like, it's about a conversation, it's about building bridges, it's about hopefully changing a culture that I think has maybe, I think, and there's absolutely no pun intended here, I think perhaps what might be happening, this is absolutely my opinion, I think what might be happening is I think that the Guide Dogs Association might be a little bit confused and they might have lost sight, which is why I was saying there's no pun intended, of what it is that they're actually meant to be achieving. Now that is absolutely, oh, see there's Susie agreeing with me again, I'm going, mm-hmm. Um, that's my opinion. You know, I'm I'm standing by my opinion, but that's what I think is happening. Um, there are other slightly more sinister things that I could say that I can then back up, but that's not what I want to end the video on, not at all. I just wanted to say, because I realised I hadn't put it in the other segment, that if you are sponsoring a puppy or putting money in a collection tin or anything, please do not stop doing that. I would be very upset to hear that I had caused anybody to do that. Um, that is absolutely not what I'm trying to achieve here, not at all. I'm trying to achieve not only me getting a dog, but other people who maybe have perceived themselves to be being treated unfairly, that they're getting a dog as well, you know, that, that they get one as well. Um, I would really value actually having a sensible conversation with guide dogs. Now, I thought that had happened. And like I say, I then thought about it some more and realised actually, nope. I think they did their usual thing of trying to sort of scoot things under a carpet. And I think they thought I would run on here and be like, where are two dogs? But that's like counting your chickens before they've hatched. Um, I may or may not ever meet these dogs. If I do meet these dogs, they may not be a match for me um, or someone may decide they're not a match for me which is much more like what actually happens as it were um and there is my mum wanting some dinner so i will get going um Maybe that wasn't just quite the high note that you hoped me to end the video on, but like I said, just wanted to say that. Um, do not, do not cancel your sponsorship. This is about having a conversation. Um, and yeah, I will keep you updated with everything. And soon I will be making a little update video about the business because um, there's a few things that I want people to to know about. Um. So hopefully that will be going up on Thursday. It might be Friday. It depends on a few different factors. So it might be Friday, but hopefully it will be Thursday. Um, and I will, I will speak to you then. Bye bye.